Welcome to My 70s with me, the Gabby Cabby, as we take a trip down memory lane and revisit those halcyon days of the golden age of football in association with Football Masters magazine and supporting the Jeff Astle Foundation. Today, my guest is the Kinsley Rebel and Maverick. It's Terry Curran. How are you, Tal? Fine, thank you, Gabby. And how are you? I'm brilliant. Firstly, before we crack into the show, Terry, I've got to say, and I've put it up here on your Facebook page, I'm holding a copy of your book, The Regrets of a Football Maverick, one of the best books that I have ever read. And we're going to touch up, well, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go into your book, we're going to go into your career, but there's one or two stories that we're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the Human League, we're not going to talk about the games against Wimbledon, and we're not going to talk about Inchy's smile when he kicked off against Liverpool, (laughs) because we want people to buy the book. All the links are on your Facebook page and your Twitter page as well, so we want people to buy it and read it for themselves, because some of these tales that you tell are phenomenal. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad you really enjoyed the book. Now, your career pretty much started and ended with David, didn't it? Because you used to go with your, your older brother to, to games of football and take your, your boots. So you, you take up the story back in those early days. Well, David's about, he's, well, not about, he's 18 months older than me. And uh, terrific footballer, two good, two good feet, good head of a ball. Um, I mean, in, in our day, there were still those leather balls with, with, with the uh, lace up, uh, and when they got when they got wet, uh, and you wetted one of those balls, you'd have you'd have an headache for a week, and I'm, I'm exaggerating there, but yeah. I'd have a headache all day once I've edited, and so after that, I won't edit anymore. Yeah. But he would edit, you know, had the ball, uh, and um, but they the, the balls in those days were really really hard, and for kids, little scraggy kids like we were to try and play football with those type of balls. Uh, it, it, it was a it was a, a learning curve, and it helped us technically yeah. uh, to have the skills, because David had got terrific skills. And I mean, Brian Clough want, uh, wanted to come up to our house to, 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 to sign our David, but he never wanted to, to leave uh, Kinsley, just wanted to be playing football with the uh, Kinsley boys. And then when I went to Doncaster, he came there, and after, after one training session, he said, I'm going home. I said, why? And he said... Uh, Nobody passes, do they? You know. I said, well, you don't pass when you were playing on, on, on pitch yourself, so what difference does it make? You know. But he just wanted to play local, did that, David? Yeah. You know. Now, a terrific player. And like I was telling you early on, he scored 200 goals in one season. Yeah. I, I know he played for three teams. He played Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and Sunday afternoon. But he, he scored uh, 200 goals in one season, which is, at any level of football, it's a terrific uh, achievement. Now, there's football players that, that would struggle to score 200 goals in their career. So 200 goals, as you rightly say, at any level is a phenomenal achievement. Now, your first club, Doncaster Rovers, you went there as a kid. And that's where Cluffy tapped you up, really, didn't he? He'd been, he'd been looking at you for at least six months. But your, your debut, your full league debut, there's a story behind that as well. And that was at Gillingham on the 29th of September 1973. So talk me through that and talk, talk to me about your car as well. Well, the, the, just before we, we talk about that, uh, well, how, how, how we came to Doncaster, yeah. I, my mum's side are international rugby players. Okay. And, and the, uh, com- uh, comprehensive, the uh, middle school, the grammar school had become a comprehensive. And we went, we went to the uh, old grammar school, which was a, the comprehensive school. It was just rugby. So I didn't play football for three years. Right. And then we, and then we, because um, we hadn't got a local team in village, and then we set a, t- a team up under 18, but now we're 17. We went to, to to play Halifax. And obviously, it's a bit of a, a rogue of a village, in, in, in a sense, where, where I come from. Not a rogue, but tough lads and, and tough lasses. And we, we, we played Halifax up at uh, Halifax. We beat the intermediate team. I scored three goals. <clears throat> and they were all let loose. They were fighting on pitch after the match. But <laughs> George Bullall... Uh, who was a manager then, I mean, a lot of people remember George Mullall, he played with Clifford, uh, George Mullall, uh, wanted to sign me. And uh, I said to him, yeah, I'll sign for you. But I said, give me a ring the following day. But I was going down to play at Doncaster uh, the following day. We, we got a, a game against their intermediate team, and uh, we beat them. And Maurice Setters uh, asked me to sign for them. 
So I'd set off going toward. Uh, so I'd set off to to to, uh, to go to uh, Halifax, and I'm in the in the car with one of my brothers and and and, and uh, Sammy Mid, uh, who were driving the car. We got halfway to Halifax and I said, "Stop it! I'm going to go back. I'm going to sign for Doncaster." So I'd signed for Doncaster, and within well, within. Half, well, halfway, I say halfway through, halfway through pre-season, it put me straight into first team against the against the reserves. Uh, but it took me a couple of games to break into first team. Uh, we'd played Liverpool in the FA Cup uh, and drew two apiece. I was on the bench that day, yeah. and then we played uh, we played um, the V play on the Wednesday afternoon. It was a it was in the afternoon because there were a power cut when the uh, when the electricity uh, were having problems with uh, people going on strike, so it was a, a, an afternoon kickoff, and we got beat three nil. But I never looked back from that. But my debut, when uh, when when I was told I was going to be playing, my one of my best friends, Gary Oakley, I just bought this uh, Morris eleven hundred. I didn't pass my test. I bought it in Doncaster, drove it back over home to 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 my dad's. Uh, and not had any driving lessons as such. My dad had gone mad with me for taking car over there. Uh, Gary knew I was going down to play, um, make my debut at Gillingham. He said, can I borrow it car? Because he'd passed this test. So he'd picked the car up from my dad's, drove down to Gillingham. Uh, we get beat 5-1. I come out, uh, being a bit down, and Gary said, uh, well played, you've done really well. He said, but uh, I've got some bad news for you. I said, you mean you got some bad news? He said, car, engine seems to bump car. I said, you mean I'd only bought it a day before? Uh, and he put no oil in car. He drove it all the way down to Gillingham from Doncaster. With no oil in the car, it seized the engine up. So that was a great start uh, to the day. Getting beat 5-1 and then losing my car. But after that, everything seemed to take off for me because I it weren't I weren't there that I weren't there that long at Doncaster no. before Cluffy had um, got in touch with me. You see, my name's Teddy, and every I've got a yeah. brother called Terry. You know, and the, the, the reporters kept calling me Terry. We had a, a, a Scotch guy there called John Quigley at, uh, who played with Notts Forest in the 1959 Cup final, and he kept calling me Terry. I said, "My name's not Terry; it's Teddy." Uh, and the local reporter, Joe Slater, uh, once on my debut, the game after the debut, the headlines was, thank heaven for little Terry. And I said to Joe, Joe, my name's Teddy. He said, Terry Sucha. And that's how Terry came about. It's, it's stuck ever since. And you've so, first... Sorry, Terry, you carry but, on. So that's how Terry came about. Yeah. But my name really is Teddy. And your first goal was at, uh, against not, uh, Newport County, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, I think I'd, I'd been playing about what well, I'd played about six games yeah. then, they, then they left me out uh, and then we played um, I missed three games and then he fetched me back as a young kid don't forget I'm only 18 because I broke yeah. straight really into the team at 18 mm. and then one day I got a phone call from, from a guy I called him Morris, uh, Edwards that's his name Morris Edwards uh, and he said to me, would you like to uh, play for Brian Clough? And I said, yes. But when he said that, Clough was manager at Leeds, but he got the sack after 44 days, because that's where I would have finished up at Leeds first. Right. Then he went to Brighton, and then he come back to Forest. Yeah. So, and then he phoned me up again, and he said, would you still be interested in coming to Notts Forest? But by then, there were Tottenham uh Everton and Sheffield United who, who, who were in first old first division uh, Ken Furphy was manager of Sheffield United and I remember uh, once it had all been agreed uh, that I was going there but I used to meet Morris Edwards and, and, and Alan Hill up in Bawtry and then I'd meet them halfway between uh, Nottingham and my first wage then were £20 a week and they used to give me £20 yeah. because they'd, they'd offer me £47 to uh, on a new contract um, and Cluffy said don't worry about that we'll give you an extra £20 I said I can't I can't live on £20 he said don't worry about that we'll give you an extra £20 so I used to meet up with uh, Morris Edwards and uh, Alan Hill 
uh, and they used to meet me and, and, and give me uh, in the Crown Hotel and a couple of times in the fish shop in Bortry because Alan always reminds me of, of, of being in the fish shop uh, and then they give me the twenty pound and then that looked on that they looked after me uh, until I finally uh, signed for them. Now, when you signed for for Forest, Brian Clough says, "Young man, you're signing for the champions." And, and, and your your opinion then at the time was, "We're not even the best team in Nottingham, let, let alone the best team in this division." Clough, well, I t- I've, ju- I've just been speaking uh, to um, oh the chairman uh, Appleby. Yeah, uh, I've just been speaking Jonathan Appleby. Yeah, uh, and Brian, his dad. Uh, I remember meeting him and Cluffy yeah. when I first went there. They played Rotherham, they got beat 5-0. Yeah. Uh, and after the game, Cluffy marched me in straight into the dressing room and he said to me, he said to Martin O'Neill, this young man here is coming to take your place. So I'm replacing him, I'm replacing you with him. But when I met them that Wednesday afternoon, I said to him, I said, listen, I'm not coming here to play in reserves. Yeah. I'm coming to play in first team. And he looked at me, taken back. And, and he come from a big family. Uh, and he he couldn't believe the confidence uh, I'd got in myself. Mm-hmm. So I'd said to Mr. Appleby in him, I said, I'll get your promotion next season. And Clough started laughing. Right? And Mr. Appleby said to me, if you get me promotion, I'll buy you a suit. I'll send you the text, but he's just sent me. To, just speaking about this yeah. now, just before you come f- phone me up, I'll send you the text he sent me. Anyway, he just said, uh, he just said, yes, he remembers me. Uh, what a lovely, lovely lad, uh, but it's too late for the suit now. <laughs> so, but Cluffy got that belief in me as well. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I was thrown straight into the first first team. To, for the team to, be, to win 5-0 the first, uh, in the League Cup, and then one of the players to be dropped the following Saturday. Yeah. And we got beat, by the way, against Notts County at home. I know I played quite well, but that wasn't the, that was not the point. To, 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 if you win 5 0, you'd expect the same team to be playing on the Saturday. Now you pos- it, put, it put me straight into the team. Your position, you were. Primarily, you were, you were a winger, but you were you were a kind of inside forward. You were a player, an explosive player that came alive in the final third. That's probably the best way to to um, I- explain to people that the younger uh, listeners and viewers that have never seen Terry Curran play. That's the kind of player that you were, wasn't you? Well, I was like our David. I was, yeah. I was inside forward. Yeah. You know, uh, like. All the old generation would know how Jimmy Greaves played yeah. inside forwards, and 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 I was a a number eight, you know, uh, playing alongside a, a striker. And I used to score plenty of goals myself. Yeah. And when I signed for Doncaster, what happened? Uh, Maurice Setters, because I was that quick, decided to put me on wing because we've got Mike McElvis, an inside forward, Peter Kitchen, an inside forward, and Brendan O'Callaghan. He was a six foot two, six foot three guy. Centre forward, yeah. so we want all four of us in team, and so I finished up playing out wide. Um, and then, to be honest, before I got injured, Cluffy said to me, "I'm, I'm going to play you through the middle." He said, "You were frying people," yeah. but I got a bad injury. I was, I was a bit unlucky in a sense because I, that's where it, it, it was intended to play me. And I finished up playing in that position at Sheffield Wednesday, uh, and I had a great three seasons there by by playing through the middle. Now th- that injury came against Burnley, didn't it? And, and it was a freak. It was a freak accident because John McGovern had put a tackle in uh, to Paul Fletcher, and my understanding is that Fletcher almost bounced off, hit you, and uh, as a consequence, you done your cruciate ligament, didn't you? I did. Uh, what had happened was, I mean, we'd be Everford four two, yeah. Carlisle, uh, Sheffield United six one, Carlisle about five or six. Um, Burnley 5-2 and I'd scored after 18 minutes and I think I scored about 7 goals within about 13 games there I think I'd only played 13 games when I got the bad injury yeah. and John what had happened I was on the fast as you come out of the uh, onto the pitch the Nottingham Forest fans will, will know what it is when you come out to, through the dressing room onto the pitch it was the far side where the Brian Clough stand is now yeah. and I just got a ball and I dragged it to go one way John had tripped Paul Fletcher, yeah. the, the Burnley centre forward, and he, he obviously he chased someone back, 
we'd finished up with the ball. The ball came out to me. John tripped the guy, and as I've turned to go, he fell on my knee, and my knee just snapped. You know, I could feel sort of not go right. And what happens when you when you do your ligaments? You, you, your knee locks, you can't bend your knee at all. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember coming off, and, and, and I, went, I went into, um, after the game, I went into uh, Clough's office. Uh, he, he did his utmost best for, best for me. He said, well, we can't get you sorted out uh, tonight, which would obviously Saturday night. Uh, I, I think I went to Arlow Wood on the Monday. Uh, but I remember him saying to me, he said, uh, you, young man, just getting the injury have cost me getting promotion. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Cluffy absolutely adored me. If I wouldn't have got the injury I got, I, mm. you know, no one knows what would have happened because it took me, it took me two really good seasons. I mean, they forced me, not forced me back, they wanted me back because uh, towards the end of the season, yeah. they, they, they'd gone a month without winning. Uh, and I, 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 before I could even train, use a ball out to the 20 laps around the Nottingham Forest, the, down the city ground uh, pitch, before I could even train. And once I'd done that, then I started to join back in training again. Uh, but they hadn't won for a month. And then they were playing Carlisle away. So he threw me in. We got a draw, and then we played Hereford away. Uh, we won one nil, and I scored the goal. So that was back on winning there because they hadn't won for a month, yeah. and then we were playing Southampton at home. Uh, and he didn't pick me. He pulled me into office. He said, "Look, it was a bad injury I've had. Uh, I don't want to rush you back. I want you to have a rest because." This is what happened to me with my knee. It, it absolutely finished my career. Yeah, it did. And I weren't happy. Yeah. You know, I said to him, I've just played two away games and you're not picking me for a home game. So I uh, and, and absolutely, no, it, it weren't in a, it, it, I just said to him, shove your team up your backside, you know. And he started laughing when I said it, you know. And that's uh, how it came about because it was Pete more than no else. Yeah. You know, Pete said to me, I, I was frying, I weren't, uh, Getting stuck in, you know, so and so. And I said, Pete, I'm, I've just had a bad injury. I've been out for six months. Mm. And, I mean, it took me. I went to Derby. But the, the thing at Derby with Tommy Dock, he just got the sack from, from Monday night because of the Mary Brown thing uh, scenario. Uh, so, I was still feeling the leg as such. But Tommy were buying and selling players willy-nilly. Yeah. And then he said to me, I've got an offer from Southampton for you. Uh, and I went, well, he said, you can either stay or you can, I said, well, there's no point in me staying because you wouldn't, you know, you, you just, you, you would have told me. So I went to Southampton uh, within what, a couple of hours, we sorted the transfer deal out. First person I bumped into his ball and he said to me, he said, uh, you love it here. And he said, by the way, I, I've never seen anyone give David Peets, David Peach a chasing like you did when you played for Notts Forest. And me and him became really good friends. And that's why I really fell out with with, with, with Laurie McMahon more than anyone else, because he, he didn't like me being with Bawley. And he just started, the last 10 games, I just started to feel the confidence back in my... Because yeah. it took me nearly four, 12, 14 months to get yeah. confidence in my, in my leg. I mean, it was a bad injury. I mean, lots of players finished in, in, in my era, yeah. and more so just before my era, a uh, 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 the uh, ligament injury like that can 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 finish a career altogether. So uh, the last ten games, I just started to play well. I scored the winning goal against Leeds in the semi final of the uh, League Cup. I met the two goals up at Ellen Road, and I, to be honest, Leeds absolutely battered us. And Tony Curry that day were absolutely outstanding, and I mean outstanding. I mean they could have won four or five nil that day, but we got we got we got a lucky. 2-2 two, two draw and, uh, and uh, we, we beat them in the uh, second leg at the Dell me scoring the winner and, and obviously that took us on to, to Wembley but I just started to play well then, and, and McMenemy had offered me a, a, a three year contract improved contract but I was a Sheffield Wednesday fan and Morris Setters was the, was the guy what signed me at Doncaster as an 18 year old and he said to me he knew I was a Sheffield Wednesday fan. He said, would you help us come and get back into to second division? I said, if I come back there, Morris, I'm coming to get you back into first division. And that's how I came to, 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 to play for Sheffield Wednesday. 
because majority of the time I was tapped up by lots of clubs yep. to, 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 to play for them. I mean, people wouldn't understand. I used to get phone calls when I was playing at, even at Sheffield Wednesday, would you want to come and play for us? It, it, it's funny how, 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 how people work. I'm not saying it works in, in this day and age, but there's always somebody trying to sign the better players at the, at the other clubs, and it becomes awkward for you. Now, uh, go, going back to Nottingham at Far East, I, I kind of got the impression, reading the book, that you didn't have the greatest relationship with Peter Taylor. Is that fair? That's right, it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the only two... I mean, when, when, I, when I look at that thing with Pete now, mm. I'm old and wiser. Yeah. I don't think uh, it was the right thing to do. Whereas we, with McManamy, that was a different scenario because yeah. he was the only one I didn't like. Yeah. But um, what had happened... When we played Eddieford, and I played really, really well down there, and I mean well, yeah. uh, and got him the goal. And he hadn't, like I said, they hadn't won for a month. And he said to me, uh, you're a cheat, you're not getting stuck in. And that's how I finished up falling out with him. Yeah, got you. And it cost me, really, because Forest. I mean, when I went to Forest, their gates were 12,500 people. Mm. And I only can say when Cluffy went there. But they were still doing, though. Yeah. I think Cluffy had been there half a season before I joined him. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then I had one or two little niggling, niggling injuries. And then the following season, we set off like an house on fire. Robbo on left wing, me on right, and we were ripping teams apart. And we were ripping teams apart. Mm. Like I said, we were winning 4 nils, five, or four twos, 5 nils, 6 ones, uh, 5 2 against Burnley. Terrific. But I regret really, I really I regret what I did with Pete in one sense because. When when they didn't play me in that Southampton game, I remember, I remember going in because uh, Cluffy give you two days off at a time, <laughs> you know. And it, I remember going into office and Pete Pete were uh, Pete liked to bet, and he'd always got the uh, Sporting Chronicle. Pete, I mean, there's Sporting Life now, but in them days it was Sporting Chronicle, and Pete were laid out on a bench, <laughs> and uh, he come, <laughs> I knocked on the door. He said, "Coming in, so." I goes in and he says to me, what can I do for you, Terry? I said, is the boss in? He said, no, uh, it won't be in until tomorrow. I said, well, you can't do for me. I said, I don't want to speak to organ grinder. I'll speak to manager tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, as I, as I walked out of the office, I'm getting angrier and angrier and angrier. I'm walking down. I went, think to this. I went back into him and I got two letters in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Right, I got me. I got a, a, a an electric bill and a transfer request, and I went back and I threw it out the table. <laughs> and I said to him, "Give that to the gaffer tomorrow, and make sure he gets it." And I go steam, steaming out to the um, office, and I could hear Pete shouted to me, "Terry, Terry, here, come back!" And I just get ignored him. I got into the car, come out of the car, the car, and he knocked on the window. I opened the window up. I said, "What's up now?" He said, uh, what do you want me to do with this? I said, I've told you once, get the gaffer. He said, it's like, it, well, I said, well, give it to him. I tell him to pay it. <laughs> <laughs> and I give him the electric bill instead of the transfer <laughs> request. Did Cluffy ever pay the electric bill? But you did take no, the transfer but it, request, it, it, didn't it, 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 Yeah, he did. Uh, Cluffy always used to be laughing at me because Martin and all them, they, listen, they're all, they're all about. Yeah. All the players are about today. And every one of them will tell you, I got away with murder with him. When yeah. I said, I didn't do all wrong in this, but they were frightened to death to say all. Yeah. You know, and as, I mean, I've got uh, seven brothers. Mm. So I'd asked for, and on top of that, I've got all my friends what used to come to the games. So I said, I used to say to Cluffy, I want eight tickets when everybody else got two. But he used to say to me, I used to have the same problem. So he always gave me uh, mm. the extra tickets to Cluffy. But uh, when other people were frightened of him, frightened of him, and I don't know why. You know, the reason where, 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 where people were frightened, because he didn't, if you said anything to a referee, then he would find you. Yeah. You know, if you were late, he would find you. But it, it was dry. He had a dry sense of humor, did Cluffy. Very, 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 very funny. But when, 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 obviously, when he went there, the team weren't doing particularly well. I mean, he weren't even happy with Robbo. He used to call him fat little kid. Yeah. You know, he was going to sell Robbo. You know, so... Um, but it all turned. It all turned 
great for. I mean, listen, when I say all time great for him. The, the, the man, the man was a genius. His football methods were absolutely brilliant, and it weren't just here. Derby County. I'm not saying he would have done it at Leeds because there were a lot of problems at Leeds because of uh, when he was playing at Derby, he was always giving Leeds stick, and then to, to, to manage uh, Bremner and all them, they weren't going to be happy with it. Mm-hmm. But the guy was a genius on football. I mean, I know Guardiola extended it to another level, but. When I, when I was playing football at Forest, the two teams what were uh, dominating everything then was uh, Liverpool. I mean, they dominate a lot more than what Forest did as yeah. such because they won, I think they won about 10, 12 titles. In, 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 I mean, they won 19 altogether, but I think around about that period, they got about 10 or 12 then. Yeah. And, and they were dom- but they were the ones that were playing football. Where other people were playing, you know, long ball in defensive football, that's why Liverpool and Forest dominated football for the, for the period it did do. Uh, and, and, and then when I went to Everton, they were saying that they, they started to change the way they played, and then they they came into it, did, did Everton. But I did fall out with Pete, but I do regret that with Pete now when I think about it. I really do. And Brian had also got a very, very kind side to him, hadn't he? You, you went training with a car, and you ended up coming out of training with, with a Capri, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I, the, the Doncaster, the, the chairman there, Tony Phillips, Tony Phillips, uh, if, I, if I scored so many goals, I scored a couple of goals, whatever it were. He said, I'll buy you this. And he bought me a uh, Triumph Spitfire. Yeah. And he put the gold uh, uh, lines down the, the car. Uh, they, they, every one of them, the, the directors all seemed to buy me all sorts. Uh, so when I get to Nottingham, I'm going back as a forwards to to Kinsley because I'm going back home a lot when you first move away you you, you, you don't settle it takes you a while to, to settle down I mean eventually settle down but if he uh, pulled me in one day and he said to me young man you do more miles than James Hunt I don't want you going up home and anyway he said to me give me the keys for that car we were in training so I gave him keys for the car and I thought what do you want my car for and anyway I gave him the keys for the car Goes out training, comes back about quarter to twelve with the rest of the lads, gets a shower, going down at cafe with, with Martin and Robbo and them. Goes outside, couldn't find my car. I thought my car had been stolen. So I goes into office. I said, Can you be pulled? I've had my car stolen. He said, No, the gaffer wants to see you. When I gets in there, he gave me the keys. And I said, These are not my keys. He said, There's a car out there, Capri, that's your car. I don't want you driving a little sports car, you know. I want you to get settled down, I want you to get married, because uh, you've got a good career in front of you here. And, and that's how that came about. And it was then when I signed for him. When I, when I, when I, when I signed for, 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 Notts, for Notts Forest, uh, I asked for £90 a week. And he said to me, young man, I'm going to give you 130 Then you kick yourself, you think, why did I ask for 190 <laughs> You know. But he was, he, he was very, very good. But, I, having said that, I mean, Peter, we've uh, left Forest because oh. for someone, I mean, Clough did look after players. Yeah. It did look after players. I mean, I, I saw Jack, oh, after I left Sheffield, I think he was managing Newcastle, and we were both at Leeds. And Jack pulled me one day and he said, you know, I'm going to apologise to you because I should have looked after you better than what uh, we did, wage-wise and everything else. But Clough, were really good. If you did well for not, uh, for Brian Clough, it was very good It was very good to you. Very, very good to you. Now, you were also a character... Off the pitch. Um, in fact, you described the X factor of Nottingham to uh, to be the girls. <laughs> and when when you went away, Peter Taylor always made sure about ten o'clock at night that you was tucked into bed. And reading your book, it's a good job he done that, and not at five o'clock because he might have found you in bed but not tucked in. Exactly. Where some of the lads, <laughs> where some of the lads were, uh, would have a sneak out and get a little pint or two, you know. I'd be sneaking out but because you get into these hotels and when you get there there's always plenty of girls yeah. you know uh, following footballers around so but they did but it's not just not Forest that was a lot of that yeah. was a lot of other teams that uh, and they would come at 10 o'clock to see if you were all in bed you know but some of the lads would be tucked in uh, in bed and then they could come down and say to me they, they said to one of the lads if, um, if I went in room where is it He's just gone down to get a sandwich. I'll get him to phone you in a bit. And then they'd phone me if I were in one of the other rooms. 
they said, Pete's been up. So I'd phone Pete. Come back up to the room if you want, Pete. No, you're all right, as long as you're tucked in. So the little little sneaky things like that. <laughs> but uh, that that was my that was my downfall in a sense. I was not one that was drinking. Yeah. I was, yeah, womanising. That was a better word for it, womanising. Because you didn't drink. I mean, well, you did. You drink probably twenty or thirty like uh, glasses of Coke rather than yeah. anything alcoholic, wouldn't you tell? Well, that was another thing. Mm-hmm. I, I would only drink coke, and yeah. then club users say to me, "You're better off having a pint because that's bad for you." Yeah, you know. But I, I don't like. I, to this day, I've never drank beer all mm-hmm. like and I'm 64. I've never drank it. Uh, the, the the first time I'd had a really uh, taste of a drink was uh, with Alan Ball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ball was a gin and tonic man. Yeah, yeah he liked a pint of lager, but then he, you know, he'd, he'd go into gin and tonics, and uh, we went for a meal. Italian tell you place in, 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 in Southampton and he bought a bottle of wine uh, I mean he, he was dry wine ego and I didn't like that so he the popular sweet wine then at that time at that time of day uh, were peace porter yeah. so he, he got me a bottle of that he said he said you might like that because it was it was a sweet wine and I, I got a sweet tooth really because I used to have th- uh, three sugars in my tea I only take half now but I, it, when I was football I used to have three sugars in my tea and um, so that's the first time I'd, I'd, I'd tasted a drink, uh, and it were a, a glass of a peace porter. I don't think I, I don't think I ever got drunk until I was about thirty, really. Yeah. You know, and that's and, and that was on vodka and coke. But that I'd, I'd practically finished them because I got bad knees. I'd finished at thirty, thirty-one with, with, with bad knees. But no, I went to drink. A, uh, I mean, like some of the stories with lads. Prime example, when I'm at Derby County, we um, we play in Ipswich down at Ipswich uh, for four and a half hours on that on that coach. We get to Ipswich, we're playing cards, chase the ace. Grosch were a popular drink them in those days. Yeah. So they don't. Uh, there were me, Toddy, uh, Jimmy Daly, Billy Hughes, uh, Charlie George, playing cards, and we played to five o'clock in the morning. And they'd, had, they'd ordered two cases of that um, Grosch, a couple of uh, cases of uh, wine, dry wine. Next day, and some of them were absolutely Damn pissed. <laughs> and I mean it, pissed. They'd thrown Jimmy J- Daly's uh, gear out at window. It was pissing down the rain. I'm throwing it down the rain. But in those days, you could go to into town, take your uh, clothes, to, suits to dry cleaners and get them done within an hour. Yeah. And that's what Jerry had to do. But we beat Ipswich that day, and I, I saw Charlie George score one of the best. And, and listen, if you'd have seen what they drank that night, and this, I mean, it's football, 30 odd years since I played football. But if people had saw what they drank that night, and how we played football, I mean, I, I was all right because I weren't drinking. But they had drank that much, and yet we beat Ipswich 2 1, and Charlie scored one of the best goals I'd ever seen in my life. And I've scored some good goals myself. But he scored. So what, some of the footballers uh, didn't do themselves justice because they were great players, but they're going out drinking. And, and but there were, there were loads of them. They weren't just the ones what you they would say they called the Mavericks. The, the quiet ones were some of the some of the worst ones. What got away with it because you didn't they didn't expect them to do it, but they were as bad as what the the the, the Worthingtons did and the uh, Hudsons did. There were some of the other players worse than what they were. Yet we would get stick for it, and they would get away with it. Yeah. Now, talk to me about your headed goal, and I don't mean the one that because Jack used to give you hundred quid, didn't he? If you scored a goal with your header, the one where you went round the goalkeeper, got onto your knees, and just knocked it in with your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was against Derby to uh, Hillsborough. Yeah. You know, and I'd always said, um, one one of these days, I'm going to go round the goalkeeper. Yeah. I'm going to walk it into net. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna try one, get on my hands and knees, stop it online, and edit in. Well, uh, for Sheffield Wednesday, I did I did the one against uh, Chester. Yeah, it was when Rush were playing for Chester. Millington, what goalkeeper, went round him, and I walked it into net. And the, the, the centre back there, Trevor Stone, ex Liverpool player, we were good friends off at pitch. Me and Trevor, Trevor used to come off to my house. Uh, and he said to me, why did you do that? I said, I couldn't help it, Trev. I kept saying to myself, one of these days I'm going to do it. But the edited one was, um, we were playing Derby County. 
and I were I were clear. There was no nobody nowhere near me, so I got time to put the ball on, stop it on the line. I got on my hands and knees. I edited I edited it in. You could the 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 fans were in uproar, and Jack were running up and down touchline. I didn't tell you what he was shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again, you know. But uh, I like I like to entertain the crowd. Yes, you do. You know, but at the same time. Uh, it was important that you know I, I didn't do it just for uh, showboating. Yeah. It was when you, when you were two or three up. That's when I would do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's nobody worked out of me on a football field. I mean, I, I could run with a ball from 60, 70, 80 yards, other end to other end of the field, mm-hmm. and still not feel tired. Yeah. You know, so I did work out, and um, I was one of the first in training, and one of the last in training. But you know, I, I wanted to. I wanted I wanted to show people what the game was all about. I mean, I grew up watching great players. Yeah. I grew up watching the Bremners and them. I mean, they were coming to end of their careers as I was uh, coming, uh, just going into football. The Alan Hudson's of these world, the Tony Curry's, Stan Ball, absolutely f- brilliant footballers. And I mean, brilliant, brilliant footballers. Footballers what could unlock defences. Yeah. But we never wanted to play them. And I find it very, very strange why managers don't like uh, these types of players because when you look we, we, for, for, for the last 35 years I mean I watched Gary Neville all the other day uh, with Jamie Carragher and uh, Bednap and the same coaches in England don't know how um, to get players midfield players to move and that includes me he said I'm thinking myself, what are you talking about the reason why they don't because they've signed but all you hear them talk about is can he get from box to box? Well, that's like an athlete up and down. Yeah. You've got to have people what's crafty. Like Iniesta. We know Iniesta and the genius footballers. But they wouldn't have got through in England. Hmm. You know, we've got to have that type of player. And we have had it. We have had it with, with, with like I said, Bowles and Currys and Worthington. I mean, Frank was a striker. Yeah. You know, Bo, uh, Alan Hudson and uh, Alan Ball ripped West Germany apart. I think and, uh, he did play one more game after that. He did and play against did, Cyprus, yeah. And, and, and then they didn't pick him. No. Charlie George, remember Charlie George? Yeah. Uh, he, Charlie was saying to us, I know, at Derby, Rebbe told him, you're only in the squad because the press have got you in it. Yeah. I don't like you. He played him on left wing. Mm. He played him for six to seven minutes. He said he played me there so I could play bad. He's a centre forward, a natural striker. You know, he's one of the. I mean, somebody like me, you could come. I could play on wing and then come and play. In. But Charlie was a, a, a forward. Yeah. Absolutely, you can ask any player what played with Charlie against him. Absolutely genius for him to play six to seven minutes for England. Criminal. Absolutely cruel. And he played him on left wing, knowing that he weren't going to be in game. Brought him off after six or seven minutes, and he never picked him again for three years when he when he worked managing Rebbe. So that which I find strange when he had the players like Bremner and Giles, what were good players, yeah. you know. But if he didn't fall into the line of of playing carpet bowls with with, with Don Rebbe and uh, Bingo, you weren't his type of player. Absolutely. You also had coins thrown at you, um, eggs. You, you had pretty much everything thrown at you. You also done a touch of sunbathing as well for Sheffield Wednesday, didn't you? So let's talk about well, the coins thrown and the eggs thrown because there's a story with Alan Ball, isn't there? They, they decided... Menemy wasn't very happy, but Alan no. Ball took it the way that Alan Ball would take it with took the it, eggs, yeah. didn't they? Well, what had happened was uh, I got an egg thrown at me at uh, Ellen Road. Yeah. But the, it was it was uh, it was middle of winter, yeah. and there was snow on the ground. The only reason why that game was on because Leeds had got uh, under soil heating, yeah. and it were heavy. It, it, it melted the snow, so it were really really heavy. Somebody must have thrown an egg, and the egg got onto the field. It just missed me. I picked it back up and I threw it, and it because the the, the way of fencing were round grounds then, yeah. it hit the fencing, splattered into somebody. The person reported me and I got into trouble for it. Yeah. And so Ball is laughing about it and said, that can't happen. That, that egg, you know, you must have taken that egg onto the pitch. And I said, what are you talking about? They threw it at me. And what they did, they boiled six eggs. And we, we, yeah, we had a bet that uh, these eggs these eggs wouldn't break. if, if someone, Anyway, they, they didn't break. But what they done, they boiled them. You know, and many people weren't, weren't happy about it. But uh, it was a, it was it was a funny story that. But I got me, I got into trouble for it. I mean, I should have thrown the egg back. But when somebody throws somebody, you turn around and they're laughing. 
when they're thrown, yeah. you, you, you automatically, it's just an automatic, you don't mean to do it, mm. but it's just a, a, a silly reaction. But, uh, because I was really friends with Paulie, that, that's what, that's what happened with, with, with Big Menemy. He hated me being with Paulie. And I remember when, uh, when, when I told uh, Morris Setters, yes, I would sign for it. On the transfer deadline, uh, McMenemy uh, were doing his utmost best for me. I mean, transfer de- deadlines are different to what they are now because yeah. it was at five o'clock and that was it done, you know. Uh, and he got Lou Chatterley to take me up to uh, the FA headquarters in London, in Solo. Um, but I knew what they were doing. They were doing it so I could miss the transfer deadline. And I jumped out of mid- middle of London, uh, out of uh, the... the, the uh, Lou uh, Chatterley's car and got into a taxi and made sure I got signed that that day uh, and it didn't bypass the um, the transfer deadline at five o'clock and he hated me for that because he thought they offered me a three year contract to go and stay but I'd already made up my mind to go and play for Sheffield Wednesday but he would he would have a go at, when I say have a go at, they leave young players out Graham Baker was a prime example uh, playing really really well and uh it would leave him out. Trevor Ebert was another good player. He played really well in midweek. And when I come back down to to change him, and I saw Trevor in shower, I thought, what are you doing in the shower at quarter past seven for? We kick off at half Because in them days, it's half past seven. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what's he doing? And uh, he said, I'm not playing. And he'd do th- things like that. He used to irritate me when, you know, with senior players, balling them and get away with it. You know. Um, but... I didn't like that, and that's what I didn't like about McManamy. So I'd better be mine to leave Sheffield Wednesday. And then he started to give me a stick about it. So, um, But he, he knew then I was starting to get my confidence back with, 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 me, with me football. I was getting back to like I was when I was at Forest. And the last 10 games, he realised that, and he'd realised the things. He, he thought to himself, well, I've got a player on my hands here. And he didn't like me. So he, he, he tried his, his utmost best to make me look small yeah. and and that's why I finished up not liking he's the only one I've never liked in football best of all I've always liked even Jack I didn't like the way I Jack played football but you could not meet a nice man. you know a proper football fan man Jack <coughs> he'd let players he'd let fans come back on bus with him if they'd had a good, a good weekend spent all the money he'd get them back on bus with us if they went into the pub with him he'd sit down talk he'd, 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 Jack was such a level headed guy uh, for a football manager, especially one what's won the World Cup. And you dropped so, down two leagues as well, didn't you? Because you were first yeah. division, you dropped down to the third division to play for Sheffield because it was the club, your boy, your club, the club <laughs> that you loved. Um, and, and you did that, like a bit of sunbathing, as, as I alluded to earlier. That was against United, but that wasn't in the uh, the demolition derby. The oh, it was. Best, was that the yeah, Boxing Day Massacre when you lie yeah, down? It was. But going back to the <laughs> going back to going back to the uh, McMenemy thing yeah. um, scenario, <laughs> Bali went barmy with me. But he said, "Why are you going to play in third division with, with the ability you've got?" Yeah, and it didn't do my career any good, really. Yeah, uh, but I had three fantastic years at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, and I don't regret one little bit of that. But when I look at it now, it didn't do my footballing career any good because you're playing in third division, not in, yeah. in, in first division. And I've ripped teams apart in, in first division. Not often enough at Derby, not often enough at Southampton. Yeah. But like I said, I was just getting under that bad injury at... Um, at um, the Forest. Forest. Mm. Anyway, the first game for Sheffield Wednesday was, I think, uh, Watford away. I was subbed in, in the first game, and then I've, I don't. There was only a few games to play. Um, we got that season out of the way, then we set off like an house on fire. <clears throat> uh, we're thirteenth league, fourteenth league. United at top. We're coming to play Boxing Day at Christmas, uh, Christmas time. Forty nine thousand in ground. Listen, that ground would have hold a sixty odd thousand. You could stand up in them days if there were forty nine thousand in there. And somebody's lying because yeah. you could not, could not move in the ground. And there were thousands outside the ground. It was unreal. You know, I remember coming down the tunnel. I think, I think we were the first team at that uh, level of football. At any level of football, we came out in a row where we were shaking hands because 
they didn't want any trouble because the first time Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday played for I think a few years because the ball one to be they've been at it, one had been in second division one had been in third division or whether they were in first division one would in second so it were years they hadn't they hadn't had that derby and I remember coming down and Ken Worthy and uh, John McPhail they're going to break my legs they're going to do this they're going to do that anyway we set off Ian Miller scores absolutely fantastic goal they miss a sitter a complete city to make it one apiece and then we've ripped him apart I think uh, well I've scored another and I've made two well, I've made two I've made one of the goals and I made the penalty I gets a corner I gets a corner and I goes to the corner flag puts the ball down I'm at the Sheffield United end Lepping Lane's end and I'm laid down on the ball some ready to some base and the penalty will be coins <laughs> Jack's going by me and when I scored when I scored I've gone straight to Lepping Lane's end got on my knees and they're all throwing coins at me and I mean we don't know but stacks I mean it was silver and all that it, it was stacks of silver they were throwing but in them days it was crazy because they were, they were fighting on heaps fans yeah. you know it weren't a nice it weren't a nice time to play in, in a sense where, for women and children to go to football because yeah. they were rioting all the time mm. I mean there's little bits come back in now but nowhere near to what it was when I was playing but uh, it was crazy when you think about it, because you are antagonising the uh, opposing fans. Lying down and sunbathing when yeah. you're like four nil up in, in front Taking the of piss. them. <laughs> <laughs> you also yeah. done it. You was also a pop star as well, singing the blues. But the lovely thing about you, Terry, is as much as you're a Sheffield Wednesday supporter, you you wanted to beat United on the pitch, like you wanted to win every game. But you always had the utmost respect for Sheffield United and you wouldn't sing certain lyrics because you thought it was disrespectful to United, didn't you? Well, uh, it's not totally disrespectful. Yeah. In, when we were playing in them days, yeah. there was a lot of trouble about. Yeah. Uh, the, how that record came about, I listen, I cannot sing. It, I mean, it doesn't sound too bad, but it's when you get in the studio, as you know, yeah. they've got sound effects there what can make your voice sound not bad and it doesn't sound too bad on it and I cannot sing. Yeah. But uh, the guy, Alan Wood, who was in Jimmy James and the Vagabond, is a big Sheffield Wednesday fan. And he asked me to make this record, uh, the Wednesday win, United lose. Yeah. Oh, baby, you, you got me singing the blues. Yeah. I said, no. Anyway, I said, no, I don't want to do that, Alan. You know, it's enough trouble as it is. And then they kept going on and going on. And I finished up and said, well, I'll, make, I'll, I'll sing the song itself, uh, singing the blues. Uh, I think it was by Guy, Guy Mitchell who yeah, uh, first sang it yeah. and, and that's how I but I wouldn't do it but there's another there's another story to that because <clears throat> we went to all right and then we got a load of people in off at street because on the flip side of it it's the Wednesday chant that's right yeah it's got to be the worst, it's got to be the worst record in history <laughs> that i um, listening to it today I agree but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Alan Wood then said to me Said uh, we can get this in charts for you, you know, if you if you want. Mm. But I, I wasn't. I love football. I loved it, and I could have earned more money. Yeah. By I mean, banks. I got offered. I was earning three hundred quid at Sheffield Wednesday, and I was offered three hundred pound to cut a ribbon at a bank in in, in Hillsborough mm. for three hundred pound for half an hour's work. Yeah. And I didn't want to do them. I mean, I did a couple. Yeah. You know, but, but I could have made more money doing that than than playing football. Mm -hmm. But Alan says to me, he said, look, we get this into chart. I said, how do you mean get into chart? He said, um, what we'll do is Leicester, the Liverpool, Newcastle, obviously London, and these other places. He said, well, we'll send a load of a bus load down, the girls. They got them, paid for them, bought the record into these. Because in them days, that's what, what happened yeah. to get them into charts. I said, no, I'm doing that. And it, I think it sold, well, I know it did, it sold 5,000 copies at Hillsbury itself. And they still play that record today. Yeah. Today, They still play it. You know, but that's how that came about. Uh, but somebody made more money out of me again on that. <laughs> because, I mean, you can download that now. Yeah. <laughs> so there's somebody still making money on it. It's unreal, isn't it? But I never, I never made a penny out of it. We've also got to talk about another riot that you caused. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that was at Alden with Simon Stainrod. But again, to be fair to you, you did nothing. He made a meal, didn't he? 
Well, Sam is a good lad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we saw, I always saw him in about a month ago. I mean, he is a good lad. And it, it, a typical footballer who wants to play football. You're, you're all doing things to try and win the football match. Yeah. Whether you're trying to dive to get a penalty. I mean, it weren't as bad as what it uh, in our day, that, that diving, compared to what it is now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what had happened, the ball had gone out and Simon had chased back. And I went to pick the ball up, and, ch and Simon hit me in chest. Yeah. So I pulled my knee up to knee him between the legs. But as I, I get as I get nearly to him, I stop myself, and Simon goes down on floor. George Cork, and I've been sent off four times in my life, or five, but four of them. George Cork, George Cork, sent me off, all, you know, four four times. Sent me off, and this as this as this shown the red card. Simon's got up and started winking. And the fans... Got, I mean, anybody what went to Oldham, it's like broken concrete, and they were getting the hands under the concrete and lifting past them, and they were throwing half-decent-side boulders over on, onto the pitch. And then they've all gone onto the pitch, and Jack's crying, and Jack went bam with me, took everybody off to the pitch. This is your fault. And I said, it's not my fault. I didn't touch him. He's gone down. You know, and then afterwards, it, I mean, Jack was... It was okay about it because then he realised what what had happened. But it, it was fine because he did the six o'clock news, the ten o'clock news, ITV, <laughs> ten o'clock news. <coughs> I got a four I got a, a four match ban. Uh, the two ends behind the goals had been closed so that people could only sit. And I remember the chairman Bert McGee pulling me to one side. I don't want to see any more of this. I don't want this happening again. Blah blah blah. You know, uh, it's costing us money. And I said, hang on, Mr. Chairman, costing you money. You've got 24,000 people in here, sat in here, watching these games, gave me more money. So he's made you more money, that. You know, anyway, my first game back was Blackburn at home, at Hillsborough. I remember picking the ball up, beating a couple of players, and about 35 yards out, chips it right into the top corner. I ran towards the cop end at Hillsborough, got on my hands and knees, there's nobody in cop. And I'm just on my hands and knees as I'm waving to everybody and caught the rest of the ground are all laughing the heads off. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. There, there was also another comedy moment of yours where you got the ball and you uh, started to run it towards your own corner flag after Jack had berated you for not wasting time and running into the corner flag in a previous encounter. Well, <laughs> if you're winning 1-0 exactly. and there's... And if, was, if you're winning 1-0, uh, Jack would want you to kill the game yeah. off five or six minutes before end. You know, and there was one game, I'd gone past someone, played it into, into a box, we'd nearly scored, went out for a goal kick, I think the striker did it over, but I went out for a goal kick, kick, kicked the ball off, and they could have scored. Yeah. They could have scored. Anyway, the, the following game, and Jack's gone back, you... When I want that game killing off, you kill that game off. You get the ball into corner. You get in the corner. You keep it in there, and you try and kill time. So we're playing Rotherham. I think the following Tuesday. This was on the Saturday, so we're playing Rotherham on the following Tuesday. We're five two up. No, we're five two up. I pick the ball up at Leopard Lane end, right near the corner flag. Yeah. I take me right into the corner flag, and then I've run from there right back to the cop end. Right, the fans are booing me. My, my, my own fans are booing because I've taken it right back that way. And Jack's on the other touch line again. I'll fucking kill you. I'll kill you. I'm sick of you. What are you saying to me? I mean, all that sort of the funny side of it. Yeah. But Jack, he used to go absolutely crazy. And I mean crazy. We there's, a, there's another time we was in the gym. Uh, and I'd, I come, I come off a wing playing, me playing me through from uh, through middle, and I'm scoring. I scored 23 goals that season, and um, we're playing Norwich away. And we're in Germany. He said, uh, "I'm playing you out on wing uh, tomorrow against Norwich." I said, uh, "I don't want to play on wing. I want to play through middle. I'm the manager. You're playing out on." And he's at bottom end of the gym. I said, well, play Gordon. I'm not bothered about playing play Gordon. God knowing. Uh, and you could see steam coming out of Jack's ears. And his face is getting redder. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when I tell you you where you're playing, that's where you're playing. And he got a sheepskin coat on with Jack. And he's six foot, I'm five foot ten. He's six foot three. Yeah. 
and he's marching up and he's getting angrier and angrier. I'm telling you, I'm the boss at this football club and that's where you're going to play. I said, well, I won't play. I won't play. Just as he gets near, back, uh, near to me, I could see him. He threw a punch. I ducked down. He came over my head, right? And I've got him a bit waist then and I've lifted him up. And we've both gone over and all the lads have jumped in. I mean, it was funny. But I mean, we never fell out. Fell out. People look at this and think, yeah. but we would sit down. We, all, we, used, to go, we used to go to Bed Lion yeah. in Wisborough. And we'd, we'd go in there. I mean, I'd have a Coke and he'd have a pint. You know, we used to have some great laughs. And he, after a game, he, he, he pulled me into office. And he'd be talking about players, what do you think of this? And there'd be other managers there. Yeah. And he'd be asking me about players. So it weren't as though it was a bad relationship. Yeah. It was it was like a relationship with a woman yeah. where if you're going out and she's moaning and groaning and that's what like Jack were doing if you tell me to do something did I did totally the opposite <laughs> you know what I mean so it went as we didn't like each other but uh, had some great times with Jack but I didn't like the way we played football I must admit I did not like the way we played football you know it's it's, it's it was just static there's no movement from midfield it was just a long ball me chasing it uh, for a flick on from Andy. Uh, it got results, and it got it got us into uh, back into this into into the uh, old second division. Yeah. I mean, I I understand the fans, please, and uh, and all that because they they had four four or five seasons uh, and dropped right down to the third division. So any football to get them back up again and back in, you know, uh, into the uh, old second division, what a bonus for them. But I thought we were better than that. I thought we could have, you know, I thought we should have won league that year. And the following season, um, we set off like an house on fire. And I, he used to talk to me about players and what have you. And I, I, I give him three players. I tell him, Oji, uh, Mick Lyons, uh, and the centre forward, obviously. Uh, he won't listen to it. He said, you keep your nose out of it. I'll pick, I'll... Uh, buy and sell players he lasted a season the following season he left Wilkinson comes in he bought three players Lions Hodge uh, and I told him to buy Mickey Lions and, and Hodge from, from Everton yeah. I know they, 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 were, they wanted to come uh, and we wanted to strike I'm not sure whether, whether, whether Wilkinson signed uh, Varadi or um, Chapman that following season Wednesday got promoted and Sheffield Wednesday back into the Old First Division. I mean, I was disappointed that I hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve yeah. by getting Sheffield Wednesday back into Old First Division. But, I mean, it, things happen. You know, things happen. Sometimes you fall out with money. We didn't fall out fall out. We just disagreed on uh, how we how, how the team should play. And, and it was a shame, really, because, you know, uh, Jack should have taken back into the... Sheffield Wednesday back into the old first division yes. and that's what I wanted and that's why I, I, I came to Sheffield Wednesday but it didn't materialise but at least it got back in there and I, I was I was happy for it but I was disappointed that we hadn't done it you know uh, Jack and when I said we all the players yeah. do it but right. I, what I mean by that is Jack was the manager and, and Sheffield Wednesday was my club uh, as a, uh, 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 what I supported so I wanted I wanted us to go back into the old first division and I was I always wanted that in my name to say well I was part of that but it, it, it never it didn't materialise and it disappointed me in, in one sense there's a wonderful story about plan B but we're going to leave that for the book because we want people to buy the book uh, Spiral Please which is another great story and there's also a story about the night the Ripper got caught as well when you was in a hotel but we're going to leave all of that for the book because we want people to buy the book we're not going to tell all the stories we're going to dip into and dip out of some of them from Sheffield well, Wednesday well that spiral you know, please that spiral please thing yeah. it's in Mel Sterling's book and all the same so oh, okay. it's, it's a true story because Mel, Mel Sterling yeah. uh, was a player uh, what was it it was about yeah and Mel's put it in his book. I mean, it's in my book, but um, it's it's a great obviously story. it's a true story, yeah. Great Funny story. story. Yeah. Funny story. <laughs> and you went to United, but you didn't last long at United. Again, that was one of your great regrets, wasn't it, really? And you tell the story about when you when you joined United. Well, what what are down we what are down with United United? I mean, I don't like it. I must say I don't like United. It's not my team. I, I don't disrespect football teams because I like any football team what plays football. It, 
if I'm playing and they, that other team beat, beat us and they played really well, I'm the first to turn around and say, you're a better team. Uh, but I love Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want to leave Sheffield. Uh, and I didn't want to leave Sheffield Wednesday. And I'm not going to it money-wise because it was, it was silly because Jack, what he was offering me, uh, it were peanuts and I was taking it but I wanted him to pay tax or, or Sheffield Wednesday to pay tax on it and, yeah. and, and Jack said no. And Sheffield United offered me three times more money. Right? So when I said to Jack, I said, listen, I can go there for that. And I think I will call it, I think he thought I would call it his bluff. I don't think he realised what, and I, and I still got the contracts at home to, to, to prove that me. Uh, so I finished up then signing for uh, Sheffield uh, for Sheffield United. Went to a tribunal. It went to uh, the fee was agreed at under a thousand pounds. I was married then to a girl called Kim, a, lo a, a local girl in village, and a uh, dad Frank. When I got into house back to the uh, from the tribunal, he said, "There's Arthur Cox here on phone." Right, so he, he gave me phone. It was Arthur Cox. So if it was about money with me, uh, this will this will prove. Money had nothing to do. I mean, when I went to Sheffield Wednesday, I could have earned more money at Southampton. It was just silly. But Arthur Cox said to me, I'm signing Kevin Keegan. I'm going to play Waddle on left wing, you on right, Keegan and Beardley through middle. And he offered me three times more money than Sheffield United. And I said, no, I've already told them. Um, I'm signing for them. So I'm not going to do that. Because I, I don't, once they give me word, yeah. I stick to it. I stick to it. And that's what I did. But when I got there, I realised this was a big mistake, you know. And I won't, the fans don't bother me because I've got that. I've got that. I'm brave enough to, to accept criticism, mm. you know. But it weren't right in the dressing room. In the dressing room, Tony Kenway, they were great, but some, one or two of the others making it more uncomfortable for me. So, um, but I weren't there two minutes before Everton were tapping me up to go and play for them, and I went on loan. And if it, when I look at when I when uh, reason why I call the book regrets, I mean I didn't call it regrets of a football maverick. I just I wanted to call the book regrets, and John uh, the, the uh, ghostwriter uh, John Brindley called it uh, regrets of a maverick. Because I know I'm not a maverick. I, you know, I, there's two minutes that maverick and maverick of football in ways. And some days you play well, and some days you don't don't play well. Well. I, I think I was consistent throughout all my career by the dab in Southampton, but that was coming back from injury. But when I went to Everton for on loan from Sheffield United, their gates were 12,000 people, and nearly all the gates where I were, were bad, and I doubled them up. And I, when I went to Everton, there were 12,000, 12,500 people there against Birmingham. We drew nil-nil. It was an absolutely poor game. This next game we beat, uh, what is it, uh, Luton 5. And that was 15,000. 15, then we played Ipswich away, beat them 2-1. We come to West Brom. I think we drew West Brom. And then we either, we played Tottenham away, we drew uh, with them or lost 1-0. And then in the last match, we beat uh, Forest 3-1 at our place. 27,000 people there. <coughs> and um, what had happened with that, uh, Cluffy said to me, do you, you want to come back play for us? And I said, no, I've told these I'm going to sign for these. But the, what happened, they couldn't agree a fee. Yeah. Couldn't agree a fee. Uh, because all of a sudden, uh, I'd done really well there at, at Evan, and we'd, we'd moved up league. Right? So, uh, finally, they, they, finally they, they, they agreed um, a fee. So, I goes up to meet uh, Howard up at uh, Birch Services. I mean, when I, when I first went on to on loan, I went up to his house, and there were hangman nooses with Kendall out, you know, because they were having such a bad time. But when they agreed, a, finally agreed a fee, I went up and met him at Birch Services. So we, uh, when we get in there, uh, I got a, a guy with me, Jerry Webster. Uh, and, I mean, Jerry's still about now, and Jerry will tell you now. We were in, we were in the meeting. And, and Kendall said to me, he said, uh, I'll give you 10 grand and 500 quid a week. Uh, and I said to him, I said, well, I'm earning, I got more to come, not, I weren't earning more cash wise at Jenny, but I got more money to come in my contract. Well, in, in, in the contract, we were doing 25,000 pound to come. 
And I said to him, you either pay that or go back to, uh, to Sheffield United. So he said to me, do you want to play first division football or third? I said, don't, I said, oh, well, it don't make one difference to me whether I play for Halifax or whether I play for Manchester United. So next day, it were all greedy covered. All over, I didn't sign. Well, it, in all national papers, it were greedy covered. I goes back to United. We're playing, uh, we're playing Stoke in FA Cup. Also, I would have gone to Man United, and this would happen at Man United. We're playing Stoke in FA Cup, and I had one of those unbelievable games. The news there is is Howard, Ron Atkinson, and Don Howard uh, at Arsenal. And I got a phone call from Norman Wynn. I don't know if you remember Norman Wynn, what used to write for to Sunday People. And Norman phoned me up and he said to me, do you want to play for Man United? I said, of course I would play for Man United. So he said, uh, right, we've got this a certain Saturday to get this deal done by. It was like two or three weeks. And if it's not done by then, then he's going to sign after Graham. But what had happened, Man United made a bid. Everton made it, obviously made another bid and Arsenal came in and it threw it all up in the air. Yeah. So the three weeks have elapsed. They signed Arthur Graham for I think under £1,000 from Leeds. Arsenal had signed um, Brian Marwood yeah. from Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. What caused, I mean, um, Reg really caused all the problems with it and then I finished up going to, back, I finished up going to Everton. My first game for Everton Back against West Brom, I pulled, I'm out for five months. Yeah. They rushed me back to get fit uh, for the semi final at FA Cup. We played Southampton uh, at Ibrew, we win 1 0. And he nearly pulled me off. I think, I'm looking for that uh, extra time, because we need to extra time, I think before extra time. Anyway, he left me on. Uh, my legs were absolutely shattered. We played Norwich on the Monday or the Tuesday, and I pulled my hamstring, so I missed out on the FA Cup final that year. But when I look when I look at uh, Everton and um, Forest, both teams went on. Forest were in the middle at uh, first division, and, and they were there for a, uh, half a season with, with Cluffy. Yeah, right. They, I helped them get promotion, and they went on to win every every board, everything in game, by in the FA Cup. And goes to Everton, they were having a, such a torrid time when I went there. Uh, Trevor Stevens was obviously a good player with Trevor but it would, they paid £300,000 from Burn. I think they were going to put him in part exchange for Brace to someone you know um, and what happened was um, I could started doing well Trevor were out of team and then I got that like I said I got that bad injury they went on to win they went on to win everything they couldn't, win, they couldn't play in the European Cup because of the ISIL disaster yeah. but they won the Cup Winners Cup and, and, and there's another tale to the, to the Everton bit. Read it. Uh, it's coming out to office as, I, as I'm going, uh, I'm upstairs playing pool uh, because we had a canteen up in, in, at Belfield. And I had to report to Howard about how, how mean you was uh, going, going along. And Reedy comes out and he's got tears in his eyes, right? They'll all tell you, Reedy, all they will tell you because it's a fact. They were selling him to burn. They burned me off at £60,000 for him. And I said, he said, he's had nothing from Burnley and I don't want to go, but this is Scouser is, is, is reading. I said, you don't have to go. So you don't, nobody has to go anywhere. You only go if you want to go. Anyway, I had to go into office and when I went into office, I did, I would want to know how my leg was, uh, how my leg was uh, going. Uh, how long the thing that I'd be, before I'd be playing again. And I said to him, forget me, Howard. What do you want to sell Reedy for? He's our best player. Now, he wasn't a great trainer, weren't Reedy, right? But one thing, when he got on that football field, that kid could run. He, was like a, he, was, he got a great engine when he was on the football field. He, he, he wasn't a great trainer, but once you won that football field, he, he's, he got a right engine on him. And it, but he was a good player. Tough, tough player. Good ball player. But And he had a couple of bad injuries when he was at Bolton. And I said to Howard, I said, you'll miss me mentally if you sell him. He's our best, our best midfield player. As it happens, they kept. We had a meeting. We played Liverpool. Uh, we won one nil, and, I, and I, I was the only one what said, "We've got good players here. We've got international players here." I said, "You've got Southall, uh, Gabby Stevens, Van der Nau, Ratcliffe, uh, Mountfield, Sheeds, Bracewell, Reedy, Stevens." 
and either Inchi and Andy or Andy and Sharpie or uh, Sharpie and Inchi. I think they went with Sharpie and, and Inchi, right? And there's a little tale into that book, which is a true story, but they'll never read it in book. Uh, Sharpie scored that day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they beat Liverpool. And that's the day they never look back. They never, ever look back. So I, I, I did disappoint because I didn't get... I mean, I didn't play a lot of games because I was out injured and won everything, you know. But the two clubs that had won then it was struggling when I went to them. And every club I went to had had some form of success. Every club I went to had some form of success. That was Sheffield Wednesday by game promotion, Southampton by game to Wembley, uh, Forest by game promotion, and Everton winning the league and everything else. You and know. Then, and so, then. I, so in my career, I, I haven't done bad. Uh, but for Forrest and Everton, I did a lot better than what a lot of people think I did because when I look at that, from where they were when I first joined them to where they finished up, what a big thing. And yes, other players uh, yeah. uh, come in, the Shiltons and the players of this world, which are you know fabulous footballers, don't get me wrong. But you have to get, like Wilkinson giving Sheffield Wednesday into the uh, old first division, you have to get a foundation to build on it. You know, um, and if I wouldn't have got the injury when I got it at, 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 at Forest, who knows what would happened to me? Who knows? But again, the one thing that that I got through reading the book is all you ever wanted to do was play football. And sadly, that's as your Everton career finished because you wanted to play. Howard wasn't going to pick you. And then you didn't travel with the team to uh, to Munich. And that yeah. was pretty much you finished then at Everton. Well, I played, I played a couple of games again uh, after the injury. Yeah. Uh, but the team were doing well and you yeah. you know there were no subs in them days just one sub yeah. um, and and they um, they were doing terrific and you're not going to change a winning team yeah. but your career is short mm. I mean people say you know you've got 10-12 years in, in game you haven't because sometimes you don't get into the team until you're 20-21 yeah. and at 28-29 some managers think well I want to get rid of players at that age yeah I'm not saying all managers, but some do. Mm. And what came what came about at that? I played in the quarter final against Fortuna City. I'd, in the both games, home and away, and um, we beat Fortuna at our place three nil. And I, I think we beat them at their, their place, wherever it was. Well, then we're playing by Munich in semi final, and um, he's going to play a defensive a defensive way. Uh, out in, in in Munich, and he did a, a session, and I said to Howard, "Am I uh, am I playing?" He said, "I don't know yet. I won't know the team until I, I get there." And I finished up taking. I said, "I said I'm, I'm not going. It was the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong thing to do." Uh, and I never really spoke about spoke about it really, but it, it came out as years have gone on, yes. and I refused to go to 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 uh, to Munich. And I, listen, the worst worst case scenario is I'm on I'm on bench because only one sub in them days, yes. only one sub in them, in them days, and I finished up being that season about eighteen times being on bench, but they were winning week in week out, you know, game in game out. Um, and I said I'm not playing. I want to I, all I do all I want to do is play football. I don't want to sit on bench. Football's too short to be sat on a bench, mm. and um, I refused to go. Were, I mean, any any other football would think. I mean, even lads uh, read said to me, "You crackers, a semi final of a European Cup, a Cup Winners' Cup." I said, "It's uh, really for me. It's about playing. It's not about sitting on bench." And that, right? And it's funny because uh, I'd got the chance of being Halifax Town because Halifax Town, the Murray Football League, of being uh, their player manager. And I would stop that because he didn't want me to go. And then uh, come towards the end of the season, I had a, a word with him about a, a certain scenario and then he let me go. And, and that's how that came about. But it was a great club, great club, and they won everything. And i tell you what, on top of it, and any, any dressing room will tell you, you've got to have players in there what's characters in dressing room. And me and Bales... If, if all were going wrong, we were the ones what used to get the yeah. get everybody going, have a laugh, take all the pressure off, you know. Because there is pressure in football. Some players don't uh, uh, are not 
don't have the pressure, but some players, it really affects them. But it was a great, great dressing room, played great football, had some great players, and the one, you know, I mean, I look at uh, what our Kendall did and what David Moyes did at, at Everton, and Moyes seems to get a lot more recognition yeah. for keeping Everton in, 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 in the Premier League, and I think to myself, Everton, I think Everton's the fourth highest team to win the uh, league. Not, they haven't won the uh, uh, Premier League, but the old first division. Yeah. Liverpool haven't won the uh, Premier League, but they've won 19 uh, old first division titles. So it's a massive club to keep. Now, when Bournemouth keep, keep in there, little clubs like that can keep in there. That, I understand, but to keep Everton in there. Yeah. Now, for me, you've got you've got to win. These, these big clubs have got to win things, but the problem is only one... Only one team can win FA Cup. Only one team can win Champions League. Only one team can win uh, Premier League. And in that Premier League, you look at it now. There's five or six teams. What's capable of, of, of winning it? You can say, well, Man City and, and, and Liverpool are way above everybody else. But the other teams are capable of winning it, like Leicester did. Whereas it, when you go into into Italy, into into Germany, into uh, France, it's always the same teams. Bayern Munich in Spain. Uh, Real Madrid or Barcelona, uh, Juventus or AC Milan. Yeah. It's the same team, but in England, and it's getting that way a little bit now, I will say that before anybody says it. Yes, it is. But Tottenham expect it to, 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 to win it. Liverpool expect to win it. Man City expect to win it. Man United expect to win it. Well, when the season kicks off, they all, they all look at it thinking, well, we can win it. But, you know, it, it, and then there's only one team can win it. But it, it, it was the wrong thing to do at Everton, and that's the... The only time I've ever done that refused to um, not go, and uh, and I did. I refused to go when they played uh, Bayern Munich in semi final cup. Crazy, but one that's place right. that you did go just before we got to uh, round this up, um, which literally rounded up your career that you shouldn't have gone was the reserve game when you played at Sunderland and McMenemy pretty much forced you to play because they were on a bad run and uh, he wanted you to play in a reserve game. You, you'd been away. Your dad was ill. You take up the story because I thought what he'd done to you was absolutely disgraceful. Well, w what had happened was um, I was in Greece and I was just watching a, uh, a programme on uh, football that not getting paid out in Greece not long ago, to be honest. Anyway, uh, I was in Greece and they didn't pay us. Me and Gary Owen was out there. They didn't pay us... I mean, Gary stayed, but I came back. And when I got back, uh, I come back to, 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 to England and I went to stop at my dad's um, and I got a phone call from Lou Chatterley, um, Sunderland, Laurie McManamy's assistant manager. And I didn't want to, I, after Southampton, I didn't like, and my dad said, don't be so silly, bury the action, no, blah, blah. And that's the only reason why I went to Sunderland. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm honest, my knees had gone then mm. at 30. I got this pain, I gained this really bad pain out, outside of my knee. And I had to finish at 30, 31. Um, so I'm not making excuses. But when I went there, you know, the Sunderland had such a bad time. And it's such a great club. Yeah. But they got good players. But it, it just weren't It just weren't happening. Anyway, uh, what had happened, uh, I got a phone call from my sister-in-law, Patsy. And she said, um, your dad's got cancer. right? And he had cancer about 12 years prior to that. Mm. Uh, when I was at Forest, uh, and I saw him in hospital all wired up, and obviously it, it, it affects you. So I said, Pats, I can't come down tonight, but I'll be down first thing in the morning. This was it, that was Thursday night, and it was Friday morning. I went in to see Laurie McManamy, and I explained to him what I'd done. I got a phone call from my sister, her sister in law. Um, she told me my daddy got cancer and he'd only got so long to live. Anyway, um, he said, you can't go. I said, they were playing Birmingham away. I said, I'm going. And I went home. And he, he lived longer than um, the doctor gave him. Yeah. You know, instead of giving him six weeks, he it, it, it lived, it, it lived a couple of months. So I hadn't been up. Anyway, they were playing, the reserves were playing in Manchester, they were playing Manchester City. But the Saturday before that reserve game against Manchester City, they played Sheffield United. And McManamy got a gold Mercedes. And they got beat, but they were at bottom of the league by then. 
you know, fans were giving them all stick. And rightly so, you, you expect fans, if you're a bottom of the league, big club, spent, uh, not, not spent a lot of money on players because they were all players he brought in, but spending big wages because they were getting big wages for them players. Uh, they got beat by Sheffield United and they started up tipping his car and everything. Anyway, I got a phone call. You've got to come back up here and play, uh, play in this reserve game. So I, I went up with my brother. Called, I went up with my brother David and a, one of his friends called uh, Jack X. I took him up to took him up to the game. I'm talking to some of the lads and some of the lads were saying it were it were frightening. It were, you know what to see what were happening. All the fans were having. Anyway, one of the young lads I forget his name now, but one of the young lads was um, playing in the game. And the fans would give him a stick on Saturday, but suddenly you used to get about three and a half thousand people for, for reserve games. So we're playing Manchester City and with a free kick. And, and he didn't want to take the free kick. And I said to him, take it quick, take a quick free kick. And he didn't want to do it. And I said to him, what? what? Anyway, uh, the fans started to boo him. Right? But I'm a young lad, he's only 19. Yeah. So I put my fingers up at him, I said, get off his back. You know, through. Yep frustration and everything else and they had to go at me so I'd give it even more so and then the police come onto pitch uh, and said when you get changed we're taking you down to the police station right they did an interview no they could do about it because at the end of the day I'd not done no wrong as such the fans were getting onto to a young lad's back on, on a young lad's back I get a phone call from McMahon and me for doing that. I've been sacked. And he knew mm. this position I was with my father. But he never, the next day he said, could have been sacked. But he never turned around what had happened in that period when I was there. And I, I don't think, I, I didn't think I played a handful of games, you know. Uh, but not shortly after that, my dad had died. And I'll never forget, I'll never forgive him for that. Ever, ever. And that's why one of the reasons I hate him more so now than what I did when I was at Southampton. Yeah. So it was a bad it was a bad thing to end on that at Sunderland. And all of these books, Terry, as I said at the top of the show, all these stories are in your book, Regrets of a Football Maverick. It's a book that I struggled to put down. I read it in three days and I'm one of the worst readers. But I couldn't put it down and I kept reading it. So guys, Terry's got a new uh, website. Um Sorry, Facebook page, the official Terry Curran Facebook page, and on Twitter, at Terry Curran 11. The links to buy the book are on there. Terry, can I thank you for your time, sir? It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy. And uh, thank you for lighting up so many Saturday afternoons, Tuesday, Wednesday evenings, <laughs> while we used to watch you play football. There literally was only one Terry Curran. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Cheers, I really pal. Appreciate it. Bye, 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 bye. bye.